Well, hello there! I hope you're having an amazing day and that you're feeling more than eager and ready to master another of essential Rust topics. And on today's main menu, we have a variable shadowing. Are you ready? As you already know right now, it is a perfect moment for me to give you an official definition for the term variable shadowing. And after that you can hate me for not explaining it in a bit more understandable fashion, of course. Ok, let's hear the definition. In computer programming, variable shadowing occurs when a variable declared in a certain scope has the same name as a variable in the outer scope. Not so terrible definition after all, right? Either way, let's elaborate a bit more. I mean, it would be bad if we ended the video right here, because yeah, this is variable shadowing and that's all for today, folks. So, what you're about to hear is my personal understanding and explanation of variable shadowing, so I hope it's going to help you out to understand it a bit further. So, if you have two variables that are available inside of the same scope, and they have exactly the same identifier, the later one is going to put its shadow over the earlier one. If you remember our discussion from the previous lesson, you will be able to figure out why this is happening. So, when we ask our compiler to give us some variable, I mean the value that is stored inside of some variable, it is going to search the memory stack from the top to bottom. And as soon as it finds a result that has the identifier that we specified, it's just going to return it to us and it will not be able to reach the one that is under it. And if you remember, we are using stack memory, which is a LIFO architecture. So you're putting stuff on the top and you cannot access this one before you access this one. So basically, you're always going to reach out for the latest one. And in this situation, the earlier variable is going to be in shadow of the later variable and the later variable is going to be called mask of the previous variable. Which, of course, makes a lot of sense, because if we put a mask on our face, that mask is going to be the only thing that we are going to see. We are not going to be able to see the face itself, we are just going to be able to see the mask. And the situation is exactly the same with variables. I think that in current situation, the example we used in the previous lesson is going to be our perfect ally. So, let's open it in Visual Studio Code and see what I mean. So, you already know what results are to be expected in our example here, because we went through them in much detail in the previous lesson. So, right now we can focus only on explaining variable shadowing. And, if you remember, we have our parameter that is called param and we sent it to our function, so it's created as a variable. After that, we have created a new scope inside of that function and inside of this scope, we have a new variable that has the exactly same name as the parameter that we used, so param again. And this param variable from the new scope is going to throw its shadow over the parameter param that we sent to this function and the parameter is no longer going to be accessible. We are not going to be able to see it. The new version is going to be a mask and the earlier version is going to be shadowed variable. Ok, let's be very quick and explain all the events that are happening inside of this code so I could explain this a bit better. So, the first thing that is happening, we are starting the scope of the function and right away we are allocating memory for the param variable, which we sent as a parameter to this function. And the value we are going to store in memory for this variable is going to be 4, because we are sending number 4 from the main function to this function example function. And after we are done with that, we are just creating a new scope. So, new scope inside of the function scope. And right after we have done that, we have our next step, which is going to be to allocate memory for the param variable inside of that new scope. And at this point, our param variable is not reachable. So, from the point number 4, 
parameter variable param is not going to be reachable. We are not going to be able to access it from this point on. And in the point number five, we are reaching the end of the new scope. And that means that Rust's compiler is going to invoke its write functionality. So basically it's going to call drop method on all variables that are allocated inside of this scope. And in this case, that is param variable. And after point number five, our parameter variable param is going to be available again. So we are again going to be able to reach it because the drop method from the new scope is going to deallocate the variable param that was created inside of it. So it does not exist any longer. It was popped off the top of the stack. So our parameter variable is the only thing we have left on the stack. And when the compiler is seeking the identifier called param, it's going to find this parameter value because this one is no longer available. So we are getting the result number four. And just to complete the story, the final point we have is point number six, which is the end of the scope of our function example function. And after it happens, everything from the function example function is being deallocated because its drop methods are being called and stack memory is going to be clear. Now that we understand variable shadowing concept, I think is a great moment to go back to our discussion about constants. If you remember, in the end of that lesson, I mentioned that I'm going to talk about a few points that are not familiar to us at the moment. And one of those was the fact that constants cannot be shadowed. So basically, when you try to create a shadow of a constant variable, you will get a compiler error because it is not allowed. I just want you to be aware of this fact because right now you will be able to remember it because you know what variable shadowing is basically. So if you tried shadowing some constant variable, the compiler will be very mad at you. So I do not recommend trying it. And right now, I feel like it's a great moment to make a cut of this video, because we need to make this video reasonably long, because if we continue our discussion about shadowing, this is going to take too long. So in our next video, we will be continuing our discussion about variable shadowing, and we will also compare what are the differences between the shadowing and mutability in variables, and we will also be seeing how shadowing works in real life. And if that sounds like something you're interested in learning more about, I invite you to subscribe to this channel and like this video because of course it would help both me and the channel to grow. And you will also be notified when I release the upcoming video so you will not miss it for sure. So for that I'm really thankful and there is only one thing left basically have an amazing day and until the next video goodbye